Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research suggested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson, and I'm the host for the podcast. Joining me in our illustrious podcast studios today is Dr. Chris Rodemaker. Dr. Rodemaker is clinical professor at the Iowa State University College of Veterinary Medicine. He's also the Iowa State University Swine Extension Veterinarian and the Interim Director of the Iowa Pork Industry Center. Chris, welcome to the podcast. Great to have you on again. Yeah, thanks, Clayton. Appreciate it. Now, Chris, uh, you are uh, a guy who's been in the industry for a few years here, um, so I know most everybody knows you, but just in case somebody hasn't ever interacted with Chris Rodemaker, give us a little background, man. How'd you get into the big industry, and what do you what do you do for the big industry? What, what are all the things you do for the big industry today? Yeah, no, I appreciate that. So, yeah, born and raised in a small, diversified crop and livestock farm in southwest Minnesota, and Went to the University of Minnesota, and I was as I was kind of getting into the College of Veterinary uh, College of Veterinary Medicine. My neighbor was just getting out. Uh, my neighbor was uh, Brad Frecking. He started up a small company called New Fashion Pork. So I got to kind of watch Brad start and grow that company. And when I graduated in 1998, he offered me a job as veterinarian, as he was really in the process of building that company and didn't really have time to do the more traditional veterinary uh, services. So. I was uh, there as director of veterinary services for 11 years. And then in 2009, I had the opportunity uh, to backfill a position in Ames uh, with Smithfield Foods uh, as the director of production improvement, as uh, Dr. Roger Main had left that position to take over as the uh, director of operations for the Iowa State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab. So I spent about five and a half years uh, working with the, what well, at that time was called the Western Operations of Murphy Brown, which was their live operation part of their business. So working with uh, 11 very talented veterinarians, uh, managing over 300,000 sows and all the pig flows from underneath that. And then in December of 2014, I uh, had the opportunity to join uh, the faculty here at uh, Iowa State University and, and have uh, been there ever since. Very good. Well, and Chris, I know something else you get heavily involved with there at Iowa State um, that you didn't even mention amongst your many duties is um, kind of leading up some of the planning and coordination of the annual McKean Swine Disease Conference. Um, uh, you guys are fresh off of that conference now, and I know we're here to talk about uh, one of the presentations that you gave to the audience at that conference, but uh, you might share with some folks, you know, what is the, the history of the McKean Conference and some pretty big changes this last year. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, so this year, I, I think we had the 25th annual. I, it was started out as the Iowa State Swine Disease Conference for Veterinarians. It was named after my predecessor, Dr. Uh, Dr. James McKean, who uh, passed away, uh, unfortunately, in 2014. We renamed that a few years ago. Uh, and that was normally held as a day and a half conference the first Thursday and Friday in November. Uh, but as the swine section was kind of looking at it, it's, you know, it's really uh, not very long after the Layman Conference and November 1st, you know, things started to happen for veterinarians. We're getting into PERS and PED season and things like that. So we were looking for the opportunity maybe to uh, partner with another very successful program that we have here for producers, which is called the Iowa Swine Day Conference. So uh, we made the decision, uh, kind of talked to them about moving it in conjunction with that. So that actually yeah, happened the last week of June. We had... Um, a pre-conference session, which was focused on PERS, uh, sponsored by Beringer Ingelheim, uh, on Tuesday. Uh, and then on Wednesday, we had uh, kind of shrank to a one-day conference. We had four plenary talks in the morning where we talked about veterinary retention. We talked about some uh, changes to the and uh, new VDL that we're building at Iowa State and focusing on uh, also on the U.S. SHIP program. Uh, we had Dr. Dusty Odekoven talk about uh, a trip that he and several other producers and uh, allied industry people took over to the European Union to kind of get see a front line version of what was going on over the pig industry uh, over there in terms of ASF, maybe some lessons learned. And then we also had the opportunity to hear from Dr. Mike Apley about uh, antimicrobial stewardship. And then we kind of broke out the afternoon session. Since we went from a day and a half today, we put a couple concurrent sessions in. Uh, we had one that was a more of a scientific track, and then we had one that was a little bit more of a case track. So we heard from some practitioners who had experiences with E. coli, some emerging diseases like porcine astrovirus type 4, por uh, porcine sapovirus, as well as some uh, research that's going on looking at uh, 
a different modified live PERS vaccine and the uh, PERS uh, variant uh, 1C, just to name a couple of, of those. But yeah, I think we'll be continuing to keep that moving forward uh, in conjunction with that. And, it, you know, that initially is uh, for veterinarians, but certainly is open to producers as well. So um, I'd say, you know, keep keep your eyes open if that's uh, a couple of day event that you may want to attend both those conferences, you know, we'd be welcome to have you in Ames. Yeah. At Essential Ag, pork production is our life. We understand the real world challenges producers face, and that is why we strive to bring research driven solutions to the industry. The team at Essential Ag is working hard every day to find and deliver innovative technologies to you because we are passionate about solving your problems. Excellent information every year. And Chris, um, I've heard in particular, people really got a lot out of the purse session. Uh, there was a lot of lively debate. I think you did a wonderful job of setting up the agenda so that, uh, you know, you highlighted all the various approaches that happen out there with PERS um, and had, had uh, industry experts come in and kind of give their two cents on each different approach. Thanks, Chris. Outstanding information as always. I really appreciate you giving us the update on the uh, uh, McKean Swine Disease Conference. Um, you know, changes you've got going on there that I think all of us agree are beneficial for that conference moving forward. And then uh, some of the discussion on PERS as well. Look forward to uh, having you on uh, again for part two next week as we dive into some more details on POM, what it means for the industry, and what the PERS Outbreak Management Program or POM can ultimately deliver for the pig producers going forward. Hey, everybody. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it, share it with us, please feel free to email the research to hello at wisenetics.com. That's H E L L O at W I S E N E T I X dot com.